Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the fake, fake ass book club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say or no? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the Fake Ass Book Club. It's your friend, Moni. And I'm Kat. Hey, Kat. Hey, Moni. Um, you're looking summertime fun. You are looking summertime <laughs> fun. I think Thank I described you. you as an Aztec princess warrior. Sure, without yeah. the muscles. Um, you but, have muscles. Well. I was about to say, you. I have strength. You, <laughs> I wouldn't exactly that's say That's where have muscles, the strength though. comes from. Sure. Don't fight it. You're strong. All right, that's <laughs> fine. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> So, um, we're back for another week uh, of shenanigans and talking about books, and we do have an actual book this week, you guys, okay? So, this is exciting. We're going to be diving into the world of Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angress. So, I'm excited about this. I'm super excited. Yeah. From whence did this book come? Because I know you said it was a recommendation. I don't remember whom. Yes, this is from Alexa on the go. I saw her reading this and she was like, oh, it's so good. I was like, well, let's do it. Like, Listen. usually, I feel like a lot of times the books I pulled are kind of old. So, it's nice to have something that's like currently written. We're every old. Once in I mean, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's where this book came from. This book suggestion came from. Excellent. I love it. So you guys, a little bit about this book. Um, it says, this is a coming of age novel that follows the lives of four main characters on a journey of love, lust, desire, rivalry, ambition, and betrayal. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Oh. So this is a good one. And just, you know, we want to, if you're new here, most of our, most of our episodes need a little bit of a trigger warning because we cuss for one. Uh, we spoil most everything we talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular book did have some sexual content in it and self-harm. So if that's something that, you know, you're sensitive to, to keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah, but I'm excited to get into it, friend. This is going to be Shock good. Free. Whoop, whoop. All right, so let's do a dedication real quick before we jump into our topic today, guys. Hands over your hearts. Ah, <sighs> Once again, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, as always, we want to give a special shout out to our patrons. You're the best. Um, all of our supporters. Um, also, you guys, I know that I've been saying this and I'm not going to stop saying it because we really want you to join us. Um, we have our very first live show at the Indiana Black Expo, July the 16th um, from three to four at the Indiana State Convention Center. Um, we'll be featured performers doing a live podcast and it is inspired by the IBE sort of theme this year, which is our legacy our influence and our culture. And since we are all of those things, we're gonna be talking about that and celebrating that through the lens of the intersection of art, literature, fashion, which, you know, are our faves. And um, just through the lens of our of our community as black people. So I'm very, very excited to um, be a part of something iconic in our city like this. Also, it's not just that Sunday. So if you guys don't have anything going on, um, Friday from 10 to nine, there's all kind of, uh, canvas paints. I mean, so many different art, art, um, art events, art and yeah, yeah, it's it's everything art. So it's music, it's painting, it's you know poetry, all kinds of stuff, and all of it's free. So the whole weekend, you guys definitely come out and support local black artists if you're in the city. Um, and I think that's it for me. What about you, friend? Yes, and and a reminder that Friday I'll be doing a live paint yes. in the Arts Pavilion from three to five. Mm -hmm. um, my dedication is going out to Thousand Words Gallery. Uh, Chris Smith had his first like debut show there of his photography and um, sort of digitally altered prints. It was uh, called Awe, and it was awesome. Aww. It was really fun, and so this is going out to them. I really, really love that space. It was so your cute. first time going. It I didn't was. realize that. I've been there so many times because I really, really enjoy it. But, Absolutely. Um, and it's very apropos to with what we're discussing today, Absolutely. which is the art world. So dedication yes. over. Yay. But, yeah, I'm really, I've really been wanting to talk about this ever since I finished it this uh, early this morning. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so about that about what What about that i mean you know so i got the book from the library you guys i did do the audio book it's about 13 hours long right um and i started it before you because when did you start reading the book yesterday yesterday would have like been physically reading it like 
going through the pages reading it? No, audiobook. Listening. Okay, good. Yeah, Whew. I started listening. That was going to make me feel worse. No, 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 no. I wasn't right, trying right, to do a physical right. copy. I was trying to get it through the library. I wasn't able to track it down in time, so I ended up just doing the audible trial. Okay, listen here, guys. I got about four hours left, okay? So we spent the first uh, 10 minutes just about her telling me kind of like the end of the book. If you um, want to hear that, go to Patreon. It's on Patreon, sure, sure. And... Yeah, I mean, I you know, I was enjoying the book, but I just, I had a leisurely weekend friend, which I'm not accustomed to, and oh, I was like... Oh, we should have dedicated to this weekend we just had. <sighs> we will never be this excited about doing nothing. It was so nice. It was nice. glorious. It was so nice. Like, I... I like I did nothing this weekend other than Friday, so we were we were out. We popped out. We did out all the things Friday. Friday, and then the rest of the time I was like, yeah, no, I'm getting back none in. None of the things. None of the things. So I tried listening. I kept falling asleep, um, just because I just insisted on being in the bed. I was like, I can't remember the last time that I just like laid around all day by myself. It was, yeah, it was really. I, listen, it. I you right. Dedication back <laughs> on. I would like to dedicate this episode to all of the rest that I got this weekend because I haven't been with myself like that in a really long time. So it felt good. Dedication yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. It felt felt <laughs> felt, felt right. So, um, if you have a little bit about the author, let's kind of give the people a little taste of who Antonia Ingress is. Yeah, a little something, something. Okay. Antonia Angres was born in Los Angeles and raised in San Jose, Costa Rica. She's a graduate of Brown University and the University of Minnesota MFA program, where she was a Winfred Fiction Fellow and a College of Liberal Arts Fellow. Sirens and Muses is her first novel. Okay, and it was released uh, July twelfth of twenty twenty two. So yeah, this is a mm. this is a very a recent. new yeah like for us. You know, yeah. we're usually getting down in the archives. So I was supposed to say the last book we did that was two thousand six or five. Yeah. yeah, so. But I mean, this this takes place in that time though. Mm -hmm. It does because it doesn't take place. It is it two thousand eleven somewhere in there. Because the there was early... enough tech stuff where I was like, this is it a was little different. Hard. Yeah. Well, I feel like it happened during the time of Occupy Wall Street. I don't right. know if you guys are familiar with that movement, but it was basically like, you know, kind of um, everybody was like, OK, yeah, everybody who the finance people, you know, all the, the one percenters, if you will. It was sort of like, yeah, we should be able to pay for our college like, you know, we should be we should have access. So it started a lot of the conversations around universal basic income, which is something you talk about a lot. I um, do. You know, universal healthcare, stuff like that. So when we talk about those things, a lot of those are mainstream now, I think because of that movement, mm -hmm. if I think that's fair to say. So yeah, it, you know, so it was kind of a blast from the past because I do, re I recall all of those things. That was, it was a main thing. So it was like a big backdrop for the story. It was a, it was a definitely a natural reaction to the, um, uh, economy collapsing oh, after yeah. 2008 yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the housing bubble and the subprime mortgages and also I feel like they do over lend to students like there's that's no on purpose that's predatory should, yeah like it is extremely predatory mm -hmm. to give an 18 year old that much and they don't they barely access. know anything about interest and even if they kind of know it's like you, you really you're don't you're not thinking you're right oh screw yeah. my future self I'll be rich by then it was yeah. like Michael Scott when he did Scott's Tots because he just figured he'd be a millionaire by the time. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll have that covered. They were in college. He's so dumb. It oh was God. pretty dumb, but he was like, of Bless all it. the empty promises I've made, that was by far the most generous. Wow. It, <laughs> that's what a way to sum that up. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it kind of was. But so. yeah, I think there is a general, and I think even now there's a general frustration of sort of the different um, classes, disparities, Absolutely. and uh, distribution of resources in yeah. this country because there's really no reason anyone should be living in squalor. It's very, very true. In the richest, one of the richest countries in the world. Yeah, those are your quotes. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> are we though? You know, I mean, resource-wise we are. It's just that yeah, I, and you I would can't say tell. a lot of the 
black people built up a lot of it. So I would say we've got a nice mm, amount of it. There she goes, guys. There you know, I she go. always has to ruin it Listen. with, you know, facts and all this stuff. It's so dumb. But yeah. I think that's a theme from the book, though, for sure. Yeah, where absolutely. Where we see where life is a lot different when you have to think about money. I love this. Yeah, so that was probably more the one of the more relatable themes because this is definitely like a coming of age story and it centers basically four main characters. We've got Louisa, um, Karina. Poor. Preston and Robert, and it's almost like the the two female characters are sort of like an antithesis, antithesis of each other in a way. Like, you know, because you have Louise, like you said, she's the poor girl. She's the one on scholarship. She's not poor, but, well, in, but compared to, these to where she was at, at the fancy, she, she was regular as hell. The, this fancy art school, when, when Yeah, when College of Art. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And, um, which I think was supposed to be like the Rhode Island School of Design. That's what I kept okay. in my head. Okay. okay. I don't know about that. It's fancy. Yeah, it seems pretty fancy. It's but the East Coast elite. Sort of. Okay. That's yeah. where you go. That's where all the girls right. go. I mean, I mean, shout out to Seth McFarlane. He went there. Did and he really? went on to do like some art stuff. Okay. Who else? Um, I don't Is this know. Like... I just do, I okay. just do Seth. I'm right. probably a bunch of other fancy schmancy people for sure. real. I just know him because of Family Guy. Yeah. He's, uh -huh. he's crazy. But yeah, so it was it you just it just showed a lot of the contrast and I do think that that theme of sort of you know, the idealistic way you go into college thinking how you're going to build your life. And, you know, you have all these plans and stuff. And then, like, how reality is yeah. a whole ass wrecking ball. And it just, like, knocks your front teeth out and your mouth is bleeding. And you're like, wait a minute. In front of everybody. And you're like, yeah, just standing there <laughs> trying to, like, figure out what the hell happens. And, and then, everyone's just like, well, it's like, yeah, suck. it. that's how it is here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sorry about your life. Um, it's one of me and, uh, my daughter's favorite things to say to each other. It's like, welcome to the real world, jackfruit. Listen, like, where did that yeah. come from? It's oh, well, jackfruit. it was actually jackass. Um, but uh, I don't let her cuss. Um, what? It was, um, what's his name? Andy Sandberg, who used to do those little skits so for uh, SNL. Mm -hmm. He had a thing called uh, Threw It on the Ground. And Why does that sound deeply familiar? Yeah, and he saw like this little Justin. boy. He's like some poser having a birthday. And it was like some eight-year-old boy. So and he <laughs> took like, his birthday cake and threw it on the, it ground on the ground and told him, welcome to the real world jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, it's so what? To watch. It's Andy one is of so me and stupid. Eden's favorite thing. Oh my like, god, she loves watching like him flip out. Like it's so Andy funny. Andy Samberg, yeah, he's pretty funny. One of he our faves is. loves him too. He's Shout out to delightful. you, Andy is hilarious. Oh my god, it's like second dedicate, third dedication day. Andy, Andy Samberg. Samberg, boom, there he no, is. No, oh, we were talking about characters though. So we Lisa, were. Um, so she's someone I think. I related to most economically. Sure. Because you're you're in that mid ground where because she couldn't get grants. Because her parents worked. And... Yeah, because there was another guy, Alejandro. I think she was. Yeah, one of her with, friends. Who was who you was like? Poor. She was like, yeah, no, they yeah. don't have. Yeah. yeah, so it's sometimes frustrating when you work super hard where it's like, damn, I kind of wish I can't even get any of the perks of socialism because I'm working. Do you understand that that was something that smacked me? right in my face as a young like a 19 20 year old person just like okay i've got my first apartment and it was like so okay i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go back to school and it's like oh but your parents work they both have jobs and they make x amount of dollars so you're not you don't qualify and i'm like well okay there, there was nothing I, maybe i qualify for enough um like maybe public assistance to get like a loaf of bread or something ah nice it was like it was insulting it was it like it was like the <laughs> The idea around it is, to me, the reason I think everyone should have access to all the public services is sort of like barrier to like, you know, uh, art of eligibility and all this other stuff. If you're asking for it, you need it. Because that's the thing, like when it would almost be like if you had to qualify to use the library. You know it's what like, I mean? I like, don't this know. Is a social How ignorant are you? Yeah. <laughs> How much like, do you want to learn? Poor, it's like, no, you just go and I live here. You sign up, you get it. We all benefit. It's Whatever. deeply frustrating. So there was all these different levels. And then there was uh, Karina, who was yeah. a rich girl. She was rich girl. rich. Yeah. Um, Not even, I mean, they were wealthy. Like, they, yeah. I think if you can invest, if you're, if, if your parents are art collectors, bitch, you're, you're not just rich. You're wealthy. You know, I went yeah, to school rich kids. Yeah, she never thought about money. Yeah. For real, for real. factor And then there was Preston, who came for money, but he was a little more pressed for money because... 
his dad was, I mean, they both had controlling parents, I believe, but sure. um, I think it's sometimes more acceptable to give money to your daughter than your son, maybe. And I think because of what they were doing, I think Karina spent her time making art that was palatable to the art world because her objective was to, to be, like, be in galleries. I want people to buy my art. So she was creating art that she knew was going to be consumed. Like, that was her whole objective. Whereas he was like, I, I don't, I'm trying to disrupt the system. Like, I'm not actually really trying well, to no, create I anything. I thought as far as, like, getting money from their parents. His parents were shitty at him, though. Yeah. They didn't like all the stunts. Right. I'm saying the way but in which he was point. doing it. Yeah. It was he, like, no, nah, we're not giving you money. Your bullshit. Yeah. yeah. It's like you getting kicked out your senior yeah. year. Senior year. And yeah. then now and you're all on social media. A lot of stuff, too, was mental health stuff. Like, it wasn't mm -hmm. like, a lot of times when she was being quote-unquote difficult or whatever, it wasn't necessarily like she was trying to be an asshole. She was just struggling. Yeah, that's For true, Karina, too. I guess. And then the I mean, other main character struggling. was uh, Professor Robert. Yeah, man, Robert, he was out here. It, and he's the other one, too, where it's like he's not poor, he's not rich. No, no. You know, he's not famous, he's not unknown. He's like in this weird purgatory of the space. art world. Yes. Where he's known, but not necessarily venerated. Mm -mm. And then he also has a secret. He does. And I feel like this is probably a good time to just do the overall story. Because we're kind of giving you background on the characters. Only because in the context of what we were saying about just um, how social economics, you know, affect your school experience and the, the amount of access you have. And the backdrop is this super rich, unattainable um you know, school, I mean, this this education is not something that everybody has access to. And you're in a bubble. Like, mm. when you're there, you're in a bubble. And, you know, people are faced with... Um, the whole point of being in art school, I would imagine, is to create. Yeah. And you need money for that. Because Whoa. the supplies are not free. Like, all of the stuff you need to create... Listen, all of this right here, all this cost... I mean, even for us to sit here and podcast, it's like, no one's giving us money to do this. When you want to create, you have to come up with the resources. You want it. To, you really do have to want it. And so... Um, and it doesn't love you back. It you doesn't. You can love it all you want to. It, it, it does not love you. It doesn't. You. you might only get like four views on your Maybe. YouTube channel. <laughs> unless you share it with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> we got cold, more than four, but, but... Yeah, we can do a but do the do beat by quick. beat. I don't know if okay. this helps, but I'll so leave I it up. So I feel like it starts... Uh, we're in class with Louisa, Karina. Is Preston in there too? Probably. And was it Robert's... Was yeah, he, he was. Yeah, okay, okay. And then was... Oh, it wasn't Robert's class. It was mm -mm. a different... It was a female teacher. Um, we meet them at different times. Yeah. But I think Preston and um, Robert were in the same class because Robert was Preston's teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robert... Yeah, he's a teacher at Wynn. Is it Wynn? Mm -hmm. Wren? At Wynn Co Wren Wren College. Wren. Yeah. It started with a W. That always throws me off. I hate silent letters. It's like, stop doing that. We need t-shirts. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, it starts out at a critique, which I enjoyed because I'm. That was always that my was favorite it. part. I went to art school, so that was always one of my favorite days. Is like, critique I can't day? Wait to and it's like we get to, and because you get to da, talk, da, like you don't have to just sit there quietly. Like you get to engage and not just be lectured at. Oh. So to me, that was always fun. But it also kind of sucks because you just have to stand there while people pick your work apart. It's like, don't get it. Hate but it. But everybody has to go through it. So to me, it's it's fair. Okay. But we're um, there and everyone's, you know, talking about Louisa's, um, she was a bird Provincial painting. bird painting. Provincial. Very regional yeah. art. Because that's the other thing, too, is when you go to school with rich kids and they're using all these, you know what I mean? Like It's very, and it's like, y'all, get up. It's so self-important. It's very, it's like, okay, y'all. It was deeply relatable. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. I was immediately pulled into it. Um, then we get the ball rolling because um, Louisa and Karina are roommates. They are. And at first, Louisa kind of sees Karina as like cold, standoffish, and she's kind of wondering like, why do you have me as a roommate? Because roommate? you're obviously rich. Mm -hmm. But turns out, Karina kind of made a mistake a lot of freshman girls does, and she kind of like fucked her way through the whole freshman class and made a lot of enemies. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Ooh. But I mean, Karina, she does seem to have this I guess like this sort of rich girl, like I don't really gotta worry about stuff, you know. Like yeah. everything's ultimately gonna and be okay. And you feel okay. seen, like you know, you're the sort of like you know she's attractive, or they're exp they're explaining her like people are attracted to her. She's an attractive girl, 
And she just is like, okay. I think it validates her in a way, you know, because sure. they even described her having this sexual experience where she was like, I, like, I like picturing myself as that person, like enjoying mm. me because I don't mm. see myself like that. Right. So when I have these experiences with men or women, whoever, like I, it feels like I get to feel desired, whereas maybe she doesn't usually feel like that. So when you're look, when you're trying to find hey. yourself, you know, a lot of the, listen, yeah, I'm validation therapizer. Is real. Yeah, so just that validation. when it comes to art, mm -hmm. like you never feel, it's just, Oh, there's constant insecurity. So I can see how you get there. So basically, that's Karina's thing. And then with Lisa, she's just having trouble fitting in because she's like, I'm not from this world. Um, and then Preston, he's... Bless his heart. He's just... <laughs> uh, he, he's trying not to be a dude, bro, but he, he is. is and so like, Karina and him start dating, but then... Karina and Louisa start hooking up after Karina poses nude for her. Mm -hmm. uh, for because uh, she uh, Louisa's trying to get like first in show for their school's art fair thing because the prize money will help her stay in school. Mm -hmm. So for Preston for his final project thing, he hacks the email system and tells everybody they're going to get free tuition if your family makes under a hundred thousand dollars. And that gets everybody out because his big thing is like, yeah, he's one of the uh, Occupy Wall Street uh, Wall people. Street people. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, let's stick it to these pigs. But it's like, OK, your little stunt just caused people to not apply for student aid. So a lot of people had to drop out Louisa being one of them. Mm -hmm. So then later on, Louisa and because Car uh, uh, Karina and Preston, they end up dropping out. Well, Preston gets kicked out of school. Karina right. drops mm -hmm. out. Louisa, she leaves because she doesn't have enough money. So they all end up in New York trying to just launch their art careers. Mm -hmm. And Karina and Preston got signed by Axiom, which is like a big art firm. And then their agent is kind of slimy Brian. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's kind of playing them against each other, I think. Yeah. Um, and it was weird. To, not weird, but I was like, oh, okay. Because um, the art guy was also the person who launched Robert's career. Mm -hmm. who Robert was the college professor there who, you know, basically he spent his whole art career just doing, you know, I want to call them residencies, but that's how I pictured it. Mm -hmm. Like you jump around from basically um, college to college and teach art because it's like, I don't want to say your art's not compelling enough to, for you to just make your living doing that. And um, yeah, he it was like all, all of this hype. So if you think about it, like um, I felt like it was a parallel to the Wall Street thing, like right before the collapse. You know, you're selling people these mortgages they can't afford and you're bump, mm. bumping up the prices, bumping up the prices. That kind of happened with his art. It's like you have it this. Overinflated. Yeah, you yeah. overinflate these prices of this art and, and it's like all frenzied and then people buy it up and you make a name for yourself. But then after the bubble pops, it's like, bitch, nobody's checking for you because now it's on to the next. Yeah. So a whole 10 years passed. He hasn't really created anything new and he's still trying to stay relevant and, and kind of connect to like what made him start doing and his art. And he ended up being the scapegoat for Preston's stunt because he was his faculty advisor yeah, and he was he going forged, for him too yeah because he forged robert's signature mm -hmm, for his final stuff. project but the i think the school was just like we this was a huge mess up and we gotta roll somebody's head so yeah, it's gonna be yours you're gonna be the one so yeah. he ends up getting a nannying gig and robert ends up getting a man you know he's ends up being a nanny like an art nanny and what New a York. fucking made-up job can we stop there real quick because i was like what kind of bullshit ass job is this this th that this is how privileged and like sort of this is not like where i had a problem but it's like i feel like if you're reading this book um as and a you're regular, a regular, regular person. yeah, like as the Louisa, if you will. It's like, yo, so this man, now mind you, the place that he lives is already paid for. How is this? Because he was like, I have somewhere to live. I forget, like for some reason, the way his life was set up, he has like this place in New York, but he doesn't really have a job to keep it up. Okay. So he's looking for this job and one of his friends is like, well, you know, there's people who who watch kids sometimes and they want somebody like these, you know, they take these tests to assess their artistic abilities and, you know. He scored a 98. Yeah, and it's like... <laughs> You're 98% creative. Give me a fucking creative. break. Like, yeah. I just feel like what kind that's, for one, that's a lot of bullshit ass pressure to put on kids to be this one thing when they're 12 or 13 years old. Because right. if you don't live up to that now, now I'm a failure. Like, I'm I'm scared. But I'm saying all that. I was just like, man, this is the most unrelatable shit ever because. It's a lot of ivory tower stuff. It's like, very much so. It it's rich people problems. Like, I'm like, Ugh. this is why I probably kept falling asleep listening to audiobook. I was like, 
I okay, will I'm, say the uh, pacing definitely got better as the story went yes, on. Yes, agreed, the, agreed, agreed. The first half of the story I could have really done without. I had a really hard time like caring about the characters until they went to New York. And maybe it was just because it I made was it like, better because real life shit was happening. Maybe yeah. <laughs> it was like, bitch, you about to get evicted. What you gonna do? <laughs> like, <laughs> so Lisa gets a job working for this Japanese artist who kind of outsources the painting and like sculpting work to other artists while and babysitting for somebody like I think her advisor oh, no, or something no, I switched people who do you say Louisa right oh yeah because she had a well not babysitting she was cat sitting for right yes for somebody Another that she artist. had never met yeah. yeah in New York because she was like I don't want to go home I don't think I'm going to be able to pay for school but I'm I want I mean you go to New York right like you want right. to be an artist because heaven forbid you create art in Louisiana because it doesn't count when you're there well then it's regional art it's regional it's it was like yeah and so. it's like all art is regional art so <laughs> let's just boom chill. I'm just saying so yeah we're, but it doesn't count unless it's on the coast so that because it's like yeah LA is a region New York is a region they're all regions for the record. Huh. Okay, anyway. so yeah, Louisa, she gets a job, um, but it's sucking the life out of her. Um, I remember there's an episode of Daria about that where Jane Lane got a job. The actual like, job. Mm -hmm, like making replicas of like Ooh. master paintings and stuff, but she was had the same problem. She was getting burnt out. Like she liked yeah. the money, but she never had time to work on her own stuff anymore. And she actually hated the work and it was giving her headaches. Oh, you mean like actual work? Yeah. <laughs> but I think anyone, as an anyone? artist, it's super sad. Like you're executing someone else's vision and never get to work on yours. Honestly, I feel like we all experience it on levels. I yeah. can't speak to it, you know, necessarily from being like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to make my, well now kind of, but, um, yeah, like I think people feel like I think that's that's the relatable part because mo more than likely nobody started off being like you know who I want to do I want to be like the Wonder Bread man like I want to jump in one of those white trucks and show up at gas stations super early and unload pastries. Oh, I was like, say who's the Wonder Bread? I don't man? know. He's out there somewhere. Oh, you know who he about is. The truck delivery. This is just yeah, one random yeah. like description of one job that right. like nobody wishes for, but you have to do it for the money. But it's soul crushing. But it also pays your bills. But you also don't ever really get to, you know, what's the thing you wanted to do when you were 12? You weren't assessed as an artistic genius. I know that. Or but I'm sure you? it wasn't that. <laughs> no, you know no. what I mean? So it's just like we're all as adults trying trading to sort in. of, yeah, trading yeah. in like our hopes and dreams for a fucking paycheck. So and it sucks. She, well, she After she reconnects with Karina, Karina starts posing for her again and she reignites her love of painting. Oh, they made love. And they, ugh. A lot. How about so you read you got to that part? Not the second round of love making. The first round. But the round. first one oh, yeah, where it was musty, that. the musty love on a futon. Ew. You didn't I don't see know. that part? Maybe. This was after they you. reconnected no, in New York. Reconnected. I didn't get because any of the reconnecting. Karina, one. she's just been sleeping in the studio she's been renting out. So she uh Ugh, she didn't take a shower now. No. She's Ew. just been taking bird bath. So even and AKA even Louisa bath. was like, Oh yeah, you are a little right, but that didn't stop nothing. So, yeah, they got busy. Ew, that would have um, stopped everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am distracted, were okay? They <laughs> going to Pound Town. And, uh, and Karina, she just seems to... Uh, she's just breaking hearts all over the city because like she's she not even started trying. hooking up with like one of the artists. Uh, she just seems bored, you know. It's like mm -hmm. the pe these people, people are really interchangeable to her. She's mm -hmm. not really making a connection, mm -hmm. and she's just interacting with these people for what they can give her now. It's she just wants to feel something. Maybe. People yes. watch Succession. It's very much Succession like the good. or like the any of these like uber rich people. I think it does do something to your mind a little bit. I and think I mean, so how too. could it not? Yeah, like I, I think agree. any kind of extremes, if extreme wealth or poverty, you're gonna mm -hmm. be extreme. Yeah, absolutely. But um, anyway, More musty sex on the food time. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they get back together, whatever. Uh, oh, because back in art school, they got into it because uh, Louisa kind of called her out about it. She was like, "Look, girl, it's not like what people aren't are saying about you isn't true. You are." No, out here like and that. And I forget what came up though, because it wasn't it like was, she just brought it up, but something she, happened where she well, was like, it I was mean. The painting she wanted to exhibit for the ah, student show, she wanted show to face. show the one that didn't have Karina's face in it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Well, do you want you not want people to know that I've been posing for you? And she was like, Kinda. Yeah, but like, I mean, I thought we both didn't want it. It's not like we're right, any one of us is broadcasting. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like he doesn't know we've been hooking like, up. Like, don't pull that shit. Right. You're not like so exactly don't. proud of our right. relationship. 
So they got mm-hmm. into it, and since they were roommates, they kind of they left. They didn't. They left without saying goodbye. Yeah, because we'll she she went to her boyfriend's house every day she after did. that for like a whole week and didn't see her, and then was like, I guess. Alicia she was like, out. I'm just gonna go to New York. Yeah. So. Yeah, so now that, you know, they reconnected to New York, um, she's painting again, finding her love of painting, all that good stuff. She ends up breaking up with Preston because he's messing up um, and asking her for money. That's always very so not sexy. Um, <laughs> so can I borrow like $3,000? Yeah, I need a new computer bag. I need a MacBook Pro uh, stat. Yeah, like she's steady working, working, working. Every time she comes home, he's just on the, you know, computer. But at the same time, though, she was definitely not like investing anything in no, him. No, she was You done. know, she was just avoiding him and basically like. She just basically didn't know how to get out of that relationship. Yeah, she caught him and, on a day. Oh, because I think when she was going to like break things off, he told her about his mom killing That's herself. That's exactly. He caught her. He caught her on a day where she might have said it, but then he was like having a breakdown. Like my mom did kill herself. And he and had sad. been there when she was going through like a depressive spell. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like Preston was all bad. Nobody it was is. just nobody is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was like a whole thing. So, um, at oh, oh, but wait a minute, because the professor actually used to date Karina's mom too. That was right. a, that was an interesting little fun Fiona. fact. How there. Um, yeah, her mom Fiona. Robert. Oh yeah, because uh, Karina's parents are getting divorced. Yeah. Oh, because she steals one of their artworks mm-hmm. that used to always hang in her room. Mm-hmm. I actually like that move. Mm-hmm. I did because sure her did. dad was a dick, and so yep. he was making them sell all the artwork and just split the proceeds because they couldn't agree on who took what. And she was like, "Fuck that noise! This is uh, this mm-hmm. reminds me of my childhood. Y'all destroyed enough of it." I'm and I feel entitled to this because he even like hired a private event. Like he was really trying to get that. Back her father was really trying to get it back for her, but she ended up hanging on to it, and eventually she was planning on giving it back to her mom. Which, oh, okay. yeah, that's what ended up happening towards the end oh, or whatever. Cute. But I was wondering. yeah, um, yeah, that was a, a fun nice little, little rainbow. rainbow. Oh, because um, she ends up giving uh, Robert her mom's number too at the end. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, Karina. Okay, um, and stuff. So um, basically, after Karina and Preston break up, they still had to do an art show together. That their grimy um, uh, art agent. agent put together, and uh, Brian, who also uh, sexually assaulted her, like he didn't complete. I mean, I guess no one considers it a full sexual assault unless there's penetration. But like so- he he did enough to where she threw up during the process yeah. of it, and that was able to stop it. But he was like so he was so aggressive. He didn't know that she was trying to push him off. He just. She, Thought she was getting super turned on, so which is why How consent can be is that important. Delusional, it's like, sir. Well, that's why I think a lot of times people push back on the concept of consent because then you can't just go for it. Mm. But yeah, you'd have to have a conversation and been like, and there's sexy ways to do it and be like, you are mesmerizing right now. Can I like, you know? And I insert mean, whatever you feel like doing right now. It just, or you could just learn how to read people too. Yeah, a business you need meeting both. isn't the great time. Yeah, they were at a business meeting. That's always the wrong time. So yeah, uh, but anyway, it was three weeks away from the show, and she's like, "I don't want," and I, I, I don't blame her for this. She was just like, "I'm gonna ignore that that happened and just keep going so that we yeah. can have the art show or whatever." So Preston gets mad because nobody likes his stuff and uh, he gets into a fight with Karina and it makes it into the paper. Ooh, scandal. But it um, it was like, it was a mess, but mess helps to sell art. God, we should just start fighting right now. We should. You know, snatch my ponytail off. Be like, rip your braids why, out. This is another thing about You're Moni, raggedy, the bitch. real truth. And then she goes and uh, splashes that in my face. Uh, yes. Yeah, like, Wouldn't y'all uh, like that? See, that was wrong. They, that see? y'all want to see that. Now that's mm-hmm. messed up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I blame the internet. I know. No, the uh, and so what ended up happening? Okay, so after that, they got into a fight, mess on the on the mm-hmm. in and, the newspapers um, and whatnot. He did oh, something crazy. Okay, and then um, the okay because there was the art show that happened, but then later on there's an art fair that Karina is a part of. Okay, and that her agency put together whatever, and Robert's there. Uh, Preston, he uh, coordinates this big stunt. Uh, Louise is there too. 
And so Preston, his big idea is like, he's been writing on his blog about, this is so messed up. There's gonna be all these rich people there and there's gonna be paintings that cost more than what a lot of people make in a year. And we're gonna disrupt, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So his big plan is him and a bunch of people release cockroaches at this event. Now, this is where Preston lost me forever and you can lock him up forever. Because once again, this is going to affect people who are not going to be able to afford this problem. So you're rude <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> he just doesn't like you need to just learn about the stuff you want to fight ultimately, mm -hmm. because right now you're like a kid in a video game. Mm -hmm. Like these are ugh, anyway. So um, uh, while uh, this is pretty much where the movie wraps up or not movie. Ooh, I can movie see in this your mind. Being a movie though. <laughs> I can see this being a movie. It was sad though. Cause at the event, Luisa gets a call from her mom and finds out her granddaddy died. Yeah. He had like dementia. And she has to go back to Louisiana and, um, Oh girl, Karina, Karina pays for her to go. Oh nice. Which was very decent. Let's and what go. you should do if you're rich and you're boning someone. I think it's nice. I mean, it's just you nice. Know. You know, I'm poor. Um, and then uh while she's down there, Louisa decides she's like, you know what? I wanna stay here for a while, I wanna paint and mm. just get back to just living and not just living for the city. Ooh. And then, and then the then the curtain came down. <laughs> but she invites played. Karina to <laughs> join her. Okay. But we don't get an answer. She's like, let oh, me think about it. Okay. And that's la you know, that's kind of how their story wraps up. Uh, Robert, he ends up, you get the feeling that his career's got like rolling again mm -hmm. and um, he's gonna hook up with Karina's mom. And then Preston, you get the feeling he's gonna be just fine. Uh, sure. Brian, there's never any consequences for men like that. So he's just fine. Uh, yeah, so pretty much it all works out. Well, works out, does it? But okay. All right. I mean, I'm not mad about that ending since I didn't get to have it. I think I like the full circle of her leaving home to find herself, but then going back home to find herself. I think mm -hmm. that does happen sometimes, too. Hero's journey. Hero's journey. Yes, <laughs> listen, let's let's go. Um, because that I think you know that's the relatable part about just coming of age stories is that you know you just get to see that little circular journey around finding who you are and who you think you want to be, and then you know, and what life really is. What life a lot of times really when you're is. like, oh, I want that. It's like, mm -hmm. do you? Because when she was talking to the photography lady Inez, what's that yeah, name? Know, and she yeah. was like, yeah. It's like I want to be like you, and she's like, bitch, you do not want to be like it's me. It's like girl living in this I little bitty ass apartment. Living, I'm living show to show. Yep. Like, and that's like, yeah, I slowly grew my career and it's sustainable, but like, I can never just take my, you know, foot off the gas. Yeah. That's the pressure I think of creating, you know, of being a creative or creating art or creating anything. It's like, you know, once it's you, it's, you have to keep going, you have to keep going. And it takes a lot of energy. And she was like, can you do this for 10 years without anybody caring? It's funny because right. I hear that about stand-ups too. Yeah. They say you kind of have to, I think that might be with any art form. Like no I, one cares. No one cares would you do it if nobody was looking you have nobody to because that's basically what you're gonna have to do yeah you're talking to yourself for quite some time before anyone gives a damn even yeah. um who ugh, tabitha brown talked about that mm. about how when she first started doing everyone's videos like, oh you're an overnight success it's like girl you know how many nights came and went where i was literally just looking into the camera of my phone doing these videos and nobody you know and that's why now you know you see her videos and they feel real personal like she's actually talking to you she was talking to herself for the longest <laughs> you know and so um yeah i just I, I like an i like a good coming of age story and um yeah i mean we had all the we hit all the points i feel like boom okay let me times. look at my look at my awesome notes yeah get back to those um, it was, it reminded me a little bit of Pose because they referenced mm -hmm. Act Out or Act Up. Was it Act Up or Act Out? Mm -hmm. uh, act Up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> but basically the the group that was like basically fighting for the rights of AIDS uh, AIDS victim, ad, ad, AIDS activism yeah. and stuff like that, and like a lot of the stuff. Oh, because one of the guys who was talking to Robert was talking about how like the art was never. This is one of his old friends. Mm -hmm. and was talking about how like the art is always propaganda. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just art. Like we weren't just doing this for art. It was to actually like change things. I like that. And um, just how, especially since they were in New York, and how important that 
you know, time period uh, before, you know, because you have this other protest movement, you know, well, I think that's what they were missing too. Mm -hmm. um, um, Occupy Wall Street. Mm -hmm. They're really missing leadership and art. Yeah. Art is, I mean, I think that that's what's compelling about it because it does have the, you know, art has the power to influence people and change minds. It carries a lot of emotion, uh, political stuff, symbols, layers, all kinds of stuff. And I think that they did a good job of overlapping those things in the, in this story. And I really did like how the four characters' lives sort of intersected. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like I books that was, explore narratives from yeah, different... Yeah, the mechanics of the yes, book were good. Like yes, the actual agreed. writing structures mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. made this story, uh, to me, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Especially towards the end. Okay. I felt like there was just too much buildup in the beginning. Yeah, that's fair to say. I, I agree. There wasn't enough happening. Like, yeah. It was too much in the head. So it's like, okay, I get it. You're brooding. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the language, sometimes I found myself feeling like, I mean, it was beautiful. Like, I, I mean, the way that she wrote some of her sentences were very, it was artistic mm -hmm. in the way that she even just formed sentences. But also, it. and I don't know if that was like on purpose because it's like, okay, we're talking about a pretty um, pretentious group of people. So like... You know, I don't know if that that was supposed to reflect that, that yeah. but it was like, yo, or just this how you is, wish people talk. I don't I know. know. Kevin Smith talks about that. And even Cola Booth, like, you know, mm -hmm. her characters never really talk naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's more, it's an elevated sort of almost surreal quality. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we're going in. We're doing it all. But I, I did. Okay, this was in my notes. Zydeco came up twice. It in did. The book. I died. I was like, oh, got it. I was like, I just Skirt. learned this word. Sidebar. We gotta go back to this, guys. If you didn't listen to our episode with Brother to the Night, shout out to you. Um, our Father's Day episode. That night before we were somewhere and they were playing this music that I had never heard, and it was. Um, I was told that it was called Zydeco music. I'd like to think that what I heard was not actual Zydeco music, though, because I think maybe it's probably more fair to say it's inspired by. Gosh, you. Because I feel like I don't want to insult anybody who fair. actually does Zydeco I think music. What they were, because um, our character Louisa from mm -hmm. Louisiana, uh, she's Cajun, mm -hmm. and which, which is the, different from Creole. It is. Those it's are the just white the ones. white Creoles. Yeah, <laughs> or the non-melanated ones, or there the French ones, Thank the ones you. the European ones, well, right? Creole still French though. Well, the European, the the, the well, okay, like the non-melanated like ones. The non-melanated sure. is the yeah, yeah okay. like That's... the reason I feel like um, was it Dr. Coco in our mother's garden? She was like, oh, if you want to know what's the difference between Creole and Cajun, she's like race. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> she she kind of nailed you have it there. It. Yeah. So to me, that was always a little... Uh, to me, it caused a little discomfort for me just because I know the back... You know what the I mean? Like The only story reason, and stuff. like, I know you're proud of your Cajun heritage, but it really only exists as a category because you want it to be distinct from Creole. From Creole people, yeah, for sure. So the Zydeco music, I just a little blurb, it's a music genre that evolved in Southwest Louisiana by French Creole speakers with blends of blues, Rhythm and Blues, Music Indigenous to the Louisiana Creoles, and Native American people of Louisiana. So it comes from the indigenous yeah. people of that area. I'm, thinking, I'm trying to think of like some movie I was watching when they were playing like what I think is what is where they're like, c'est la vie, c'est Can you play, so like play what we think it is or we can even find like one, right? So this is probably more like jazz blues, like Zydeco music. And here's what we heard. No, I'm not playing what we heard. Can you show the man? No. Y'all can click on it. I'm putting the link in the notes. She's rude. Because if it was something she cared about, she put it in here. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know if I can do it that to so myself. Bad. I don't want to go down that road. It was so bad, you guys. I felt like it gave, you know, maybe. Because right. I don't want to be disrespectful it, to a I whole art like form. I still like to learn, though. And I'm glad that I knew this word. Because I might so have just, funny. sometimes I when that you that don't too. recognize something, you just, your brain just yeah, skips like, over it. But since that? I was able to be like, I know that. Yo. Um, there yeah. was something Preston said, a quote of his I wrote down uh, when he was talking about his frustration with making art. Mm. And he was listing the things that was bothering him. And he put lack of an undo button. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, because he was doing a lot of stuff digital digitally. Mm -hmm. And so when you switch over, your brain doesn't Can't always, undo. every once in a while, even when I'm painting, I'll do this. And it's like, girl, that don't work. <laughs> that don't even work. Nope. But I think it's an interesting contrast because mm -hmm. then you have Robert teaching a young person who's learning how to draw like figures and stuff. He had like a whole, you know, like cups and stuff. I don't know, whatever. You just yeah, you try to draw what's in front life. of you. It's still life. And um, he was like, I see that you went back and erased stuff. He's like, leave it. Mm -hmm. Because we want to see how you got there. You want to see the sure journey. So it's interesting how 
you know, depending on what medium you're using, maybe, you know, it's good to see your mistakes. So you can know how you got somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas like in digital art, it's a little, maybe it's more clean. It's more sanitized. Oh, you got grids and shit. Yeah. Like, so you, you know can, I mean? like, you can make you, sure stuff is exactly yeah. centered and blah, blah, blah. So, and life isn't that way. So, yeah. yeah. So, and there, there are benefits to that. And then there's just sometimes the art is, oh, I think I liked how at the end of the book she described the mood because he's like it's not just your hand you want to draw with your arm mm. like it's not just communicating exactly what you see but how that how it's affecting you oh and it's like my arm's doing this now. yeah doing yeah this. which is why having a when we did the live figure drawing like having a live model is different than working off of a photograph yeah for you know sure. what i mean like you're gonna get different you're gonna get a different quality of work and it's mm. gonna show so um yeah so we're fancy now because we did real yes. art in real life. Yes, we um, did. We just read a whole book about it. We did. Um, I liked it. I think, um, should we rate the book real quick then or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, wait, do we do it? You do it after the break. You want to take a break first? I do. Let's take a break, guys. Okay. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Welcome back from the break. Mm, yeah. I like the, the. You know what? We didn't have to deal with racism in this book. Not directly. Not directly. They reference it, but none of the characters were really like in an uphill battle with racism. No, they weren't. They were. We didn't really have to watch that. I mean, there was Alejandro. I'm sure he probably had to deal with some, but mm -hmm. Inez probably did too. Yeah. She was tawny. Yeah. Oh, she was described as tawny. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But um. All it was their problem though. Not oh, ours. I think I want to rate this uh, maybe four paint brushes out of five. Okay. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go with four as well. Um, I don't actually go. think you're allowed to rate it. Oh, yeah. You couldn't wait to Moni's say that. Moni's been disqualified. Actually, it just came to me, but I'm sorry. We're gonna have to disqualify your rating. Because you're you smiling a little. That it. little turn of the no, corner I'm in sad. your mouth right now. Is a little too, um, and like you're enjoying this. Way I too hate much. that I have to do this. It's like you know what? I, I'm, uh, I take <laughs> sprinkle no water in, face. in this. Telling but you, yeah, you still got four. Do you think you're gonna finish it? No. If I'm being honest, I'm and not gonna go back, guys. Right there. I'm not gonna go back. I mean, you told me what happened. I mean, this is what book clubs sure. are about. We're doing this for other people. You did it for me this week. You don't Boom. have to read the book either if you don't want to. Boom. Feel empowered. You no, know, that's what we just told you. The cover was awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Very good cover art. Was it awesome? I liked it. Okay. No, I mean, because you know, I'm not an artist. I, mean, I'm a I don't know. Drunk. I don't know. Everything is awesome. It, sure. I mean, <laughs> it, it was giving. You know, what you picture when you think about European art. Like I pictured somebody sprawled across. You know, the ceiling like of a that place. Art. Yeah. You know, oil painting or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the characters, Robert. He. Uh, oh, because I never disclosed his secret like because Robert had a secret Ooh, this his famous secret. painting that was like hanging at the secret. Whitney and stuff like that and kind of put him on the map when he was younger was of a friend who had uh, died from AIDS so he had done a painting of him in his last days and it was really powerful and compelling but um, after he died um, the the subject's mother was like please don't like display this like I don't think he would want people to see him in this stage in his life and she was just but he did it anyway and later on when he's older he was like you know what I kind of stole that and that's kind of kind what, of like you totally stole that I that's think he said um I stole it that's what made it great what and I kind of get well, what you mean is that how the, is that why they won't give back the art they stole from like indigenous people. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's this um, there's a quote that's attributed to Picasso, but a bunch of other people said it in other different ways. Like it's like Faulkner, Steve Jobs, all these different guys, where basically good artists borrow and great artists steal. Like there's mm -hmm. this idea of the act of stealing this moment that you didn't have a right to and showing it to other people. There's that glimpse of it. Like people know that they're kind of engaging super in honest. something. Oh, people want to feel it's kind yeah, of the same reason why you want yeah, me to, want to like trespass. they want to see us fight a little bit. Right. Right. It's like it's not enough that it's that is so that's the interesting yeah. thing about humanity. It's it like is. so we just we wanna 
It's each other, you know, fight to the tear death. We're going to lift each other up so we can just tear each other down. Yeah. And that's not cool. Um, but yeah, huh. that was, but entertaining, but that was Robert, and I think that was always kind of haunted his career a little bit because right. I don't think he ever did anything that was as well. I couldn't received. have done that. I couldn't. I like. I don't think I could have done that, especially if it was supposed to be my friend. When like, they I'm described not, the painting too, yeah. oh, because that was the thing too. I felt mm -mm. like the work was all described really well. It, yeah, like because yeah. you're visually trying to communicate. Like all, the, it's a visual medium, painting yeah, and drawing, sure. but everything's being done with words, and they yeah, reference a lot of art that I'm familiar with to help paint the, the picture like and give references to the work that the artists in the book are creating mm -hmm. well and even though i wasn't necessarily familiar with the artists or the actual art they were talking about the way that they describe it again like the, the language in the book was really beautifully done like i mean as far as painting a picture with her words she did what do a good you job think of like the romance element because that that was the other thing too because it's an lgbt yeah it's plus, very much from uh, a, the female gaze of a queer person like the story it kind of like analyzing capitalism and stuff like that because oh, i did remember reading about the author she came out as bi yeah she is bi yeah mm -hmm. so yeah you so maybe she felt like you know that was a, a narrative that doesn't get explored a lot, so she put it in there. Maybe. Um. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. Of the, it was cool. <laughs> I mean, they were doing of it. this. It the, was cool. The um, Louisa and Karina characters. Mm -hmm. Um. Kind of. I mean, they never really like talk about it head on, though. It's just it's kind of going on, mm -hmm. like that. The characters just are. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like, even when they first meet, you could tell that there was going to be something because they both are, like, muses the, for each other because they're, yeah. like, secretly drawing each other. And yeah, it's like there was this, foreshadowing. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, what's this in your bag? Oh, it's, it's like, oh, I just happen to be going through your sketchbook. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, I mean, it was fun. It was it was giving college romance. It was yeah. giving how you feel when you first have a crush on somebody. I guess that's why it wasn't necessarily romance. It just came it across wasn't. as, like, it's like they oh, doing it. These college. are college kids hunching yeah. on each other. Yeah. Congratulations, Which guys. Which I think is why, for that part, I was like, eh, I don't need all this. Yeah. Like, to it me, was that fun, was the though. least compelling part of the book. But it wasn't, like, for me, I don't know, and I don't know how the second half of the sex stories went down, if they were super, super graphic, but I didn't feel like she it made it. more graphic. Well, was it? When okay. they reconnected, there was mention of nipples. There was mention of nipples before. Oh, okay. Well, then it was probably same. You know, it, it wasn't super graphic. It was like, I, like oh. I wasn't. Yeah, I was like, okay, okay. You know, it was like that's okay. They're doing it. It's, it's about fine. like when I'm watching a sex scene on Sex in the City, where it's kind of like, still okay, seen this one of is those, yeah. going on. It's, I did start back watching that though. What? Skirt. And just like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Big die. Oh, because uh, that's the other thing. I I forgot to put that in my notes, but I did want to touch in on this it did remind me of Candace Bushnell a little bit the woman who wrote Sex in the City thank you because like, she did this was a lot of her subject matter which is talking about the lives of really rich New Yorkers oh yeah definitely okay yeah I can see that they were on their way they were trying to all get there mm -hmm. Karina was the only real rich one but it was interesting to see her like she's like this isn't the New York I know like I don't remember the dingy one with colorful shit like I remember like the doorman and <laughs> very you know sterile environment so it's interesting how you can be in the same city with people and have such a wildly different experience. So mm -hmm. that contrast, I mean, there was just a lot of contrasting. They all took turns being each other's muses, um, reason for being jealous, well, wait, you know, do you think desiring. It was sirens and muses. Like, who do you think were the sirens? All of them muses? at different times. Okay. Yeah, I think they, that's. What, I guess that's kind of what I was answering without you even asking me. It was that ah. it felt like you know they all kind of took turns because you see Preston, you know. Um, Kind of like looking down on his teacher for like, oh, capitalist, like you're, you, you, you're not sticking it to the man anymore. And then he finds himself in a situation where they're like, bitch, you better produce some art or you're getting fired. You need this money. You're begging, you know. Everyone's talking all that good shit until rents do. Until they he say. Was like, oh yeah, I can't get kicked out. That would be disastrous. Exactly. I and go so back to my debt. Cause it's let's humbling. Because I think the. Uh, like, I feel like we got to roll, did roll I back say the that rating. Before, that mm -hmm. Preston's dad kind of. Yeah, they were kind of, but you said, bull, we were saying like, obviously, like when you're in college, your parents have control over like the money that's going to get spent on you. So we were just saying like his dad was pulling the purse strings because he was doing all that stuff at school and stuff like that. Yeah. And they weren't. Well, no, I meant his dad being like abusive towards his mom. Yeah, um, We glazed over it, I feel like. Okay. Because we were saying we saw kind of glimpses of him kind of like touching into that, like him 
maybe because of his own personal experiences, you know, repeating he threw the glass, cycles. yeah, repeating the cycles and unraveling because you had and mentioned then being it. And scared by his own thoughts because a lot of times mm-hmm. he would have these thoughts where he wanted to like physically hurt Karina. Like throw her up in the air, have her hit by a car. Or yeah. yeah. Do you do that? Do you picture no. physical? Oh. <laughs> Just me. Oh, no. <laughs> I do that when I'm driving sometimes. You don't ever picture, I used to, I'm, I'm better now, but I used to be like, because I mean, I'm not going to get into like a road rage sure. altercation with somebody. Like I find that You're to be, to fantasize about whatever yeah, but to. yeah, like I would, I'd be like, man, Ooh, I wish I could just ram my car, like boom. And then just picture their car, like flipping over traffic. Uh, yep. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, you impressed him, man. Yeah. That's that's where we be at sometimes. It's no, like relatable. And, and, well, I picture to, people and dying to his too. credit, he never directly put hands on Karina, mm-hmm. but he just thought about it. He just thought about it, and it, it, he was ramping up to it. He, it was eventually over time. I mean, just cue the drug use and oh, like one yeah. coked out day there of her coming of home. Oh yeah, and, there was tons of drinking because none of them were like twenty one mm-hmm. yet. So under eight, that tracks for college. Like, y'all does. know, that stop was playing. Oh, and lots of smoking. To me, I felt yeah. like she was also painting a lord of sort of uh sensual like uh it's like the breath st- stinks and yeah, it's coffee and say, cigarettes like and... Ugh, if you aren't showering or, but, and you you're smoking said that i cannot because she was saying too like you can't smoke in the space where you're painting because it's gonna get into the collectors are gonna be like uh uh-uh, this smells like smoke but, and it's coming in my house should, like gross yeah like so um to me that was kind of interesting because but and actually i do remember i started smoking in art school mm-hmm. so, it seems like it goes yeah but i don't know don't don't do that. Yeah, that's yeah. it's not good for you. It's not. It's, not. it's bad for your skin too. <sighs> yeah, man. So I don't know, man. I since I you know got the rug pulled from up under me in the middle of the rating of the book. I'm not gonna finish it though. But I do think I agree with you as far as just saying. <laughs> Like, there was a lot of build-up and build-up around the characters. And the characters themselves weren't so compelling that I needed all of that time learning about who they were. It's like, cool. Uh, average <laughs> poor girl. Got the rich girl. Got the, you know, dude who's dis- middle-aged. It could, to me, the book could have started once it got to New York. Yeah. We well, could have just got a couple chapters of, of like, college. boom. It could have yeah. been, like, a backstory or whatever. Yeah. But that's what they'll do for the movie if they ever make one. You, yeah. Well, do you think? but they gotta do... They wouldn't have to do all that. No. They'd be able to montage their way through that shit. You could... You know what? We I'm can talk about that later. To, yeah. I don't, they, they can do whatever they want. If mm-hmm. it's a movie or a Netflix series, whatever they want to do with yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I'll, I will, would you watch it? Yeah, okay. I'd watch it. Because I'd be curious to see who they cast for the characters and yeah. just see how they take that and... Because it was it had some good bones, you know. That's what I will say. Yeah. It had some good bones. There were parts that was and like, and I promise, um, like you missed the best part of the book. I know. I'm so, that's crazy because mm, really like that up. was when I was like, because I know it's a good book when I don't want to stop listening to it. Mm-hmm. Like yesterday when I was listening, I wanted to take breaks and then and, like go back to other stuff. Mm-hmm. But today when I was listening to it and finally got to like when stuff was happening, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I wanna, I agree. It was starting to get good. But, you know, hey, it's over now. On to the next. So um, with that in mind. Speaking of which. (laughs) With that in mind, guys, um, we're going to spin the wheel real quick. Spin it. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, I mean, I hate to keep bringing it up, but I don't hate to keep bringing it up. You guys, (laughs) we have the Black Expo coming up. We are going to be talking about our legacy, our influence, and our culture in terms of fashion, art, and literature. So if we are really good and we can extract the audio from that, we will share that with you guys. Mm -hmm. But if not... We're going to get in here and flap our gums about our experience and some of the conversations we had, maybe some of the fashion that we saw, Mm -hmm. because that could be fun. You know what I mean? So we want to be able to share that experience. And maybe some gossip. Maybe some hot gossip on the streets. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, wish us luck, you guys. We are very excited, a little nervous, but I mean, it's low stakes. It is. You know, and it'll be fun. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? I don't know. You could trip and Man, bust your lip in front of everybody. There's no like little pressed and you like fart stunt in the or middle. something like that. We should be fine. Yeah. I was so irritated by that stunt. By the roaches. Roaches are so gross. That's nothing to be played with. That's it's triggering. I don't like just them describing it was like creepy because he was talking Mm-mm. about how they sounded in the box. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Bah. Uh-uh. So yeah, uh yeah. He disrespected everybody with that one, but I am excited to share our experience with you guys next week. Hopefully, um, we'll have at least some audio. We'll definitely have some pictures and images and all of those things. Um, shout out to Box Artist. 
um, for allowing us to be part of it and the IBE. We are super excited. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else going on? I think we did everything. I think we did all the things, you guys. I'm proud of us. I too. Bam. Um, all right, guys. Nailed it like we always do. Um, hopefully you come back next week. Um, take care of yourself. I think if anything, it, the, my takeaway from this book is, is everything's work. So you gotta find the work, work that compels you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Try to try to find that like, oh man, I want to be an artist. When you've been in it for 10 years, try to always find like, what was it about art that I loved initially? And hold on to that for dear life. And a lot of artists are weird. They are. But that makes life interesting, it too. It does. It does. Because it can um, be boring here. And also, your body belongs to you. So if you want to be weird, be weird. Be weird. Yeah, definitely be weird. It's a little bit more interesting. So, mm -hmm. all right, guys. Well, until next time, peace. Before we go, we must give thanks Thank to you. Urban Nerd for providing our music. And legal services were handled by Trazen A.M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake ass book club. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the fake ass book club. We out. <laughs>